Hello, and welcome to round two of the Parenting Roundabout podcast. I'm Terry Morrow, and I'm here with Catherine Haleko. Hello. Usually on this podcast, we talk about parenting issues, but once a week, Catherine and I like to get together to discuss TV, movies, books, and other entertainment topics, because it's nice to talk about something other than parenting for a change. This week, we are continuing with our watch of the second season of Veronica Mars with the episode, My Mother the Fiend. And we're wrapping up World of Dance with the last two episodes, the second semifinal and the finale, which were last week, and you are probably over it by now. But we are coming to it with a fresh degree of, I don't know, outrage? (laughs) I just, for one thing, what a fizzle that finale was. I mean, it's not their fault, I guess, because they didn't have an audience, but it just... I, the whole the whole semifinals and finale, there was so much of auditions. Right. So much stuff. And it's like, three episodes, we're done. Right. I, I, I guess I'm used to, I mean, like, So You Think You Can Dance has a long audition process, but then they also have a long winnowing down process of the, well, I, I mean, I guess the duels were the winnowing down. I guess I just expected more of this ending portion. Right. And I also think having the, semi the second semifinal and then the final the very next day like back yeah, to back that was unfortunate even though i don't think they filmed it that way um it just it was hard to say i think that added to the like anticlimactic feeling yeah well i guess before i rant about the finals let's talk about the second to semifinals in which oxygen and mdc3 were triumphant and in my opinion jake and chow were totally robbed Mm-hmm. And I really hate the way they do this. I, I Looking over World of Dance on Wikipedia, it seems like maybe they've had different formats over the years and different ways of doing things. This I do not like so much because it, it seems to – I don't know. I don't like the scoring mm-hmm. because for the early people, they're always going to score lower, I think. And it also creates a situation where, like with Jake and Chow, the comments were just overwhelmingly favorable, just over the top favorable. Oh my gosh, that was the best thing ever. And then their score that they got was like, you can look at that score and say, yeah, somebody can beat that. Mm -hmm. And so it was, you know, so they had to sweat it out backstage and it was the last, the last act, I guess the last two acts wound up knocking them off. And again, you feel like if things were in a different order, would there have been the same results? I feel like if J- if MDC3 had gone third and Jake and Chow had gone last, they would have, have gone on. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I mean, it didn't quite work out that way in the finale, so maybe I'm full of hot air. But I really, really liked them. And MDC3 are fine and... You know, it's nice to see one of the kid acts go through, one of the, right. the junior division acts go through. That's wonderful. They dance beautifully. I feel like they dance pretty much the same thing every time. They apply different stories to it. But I didn't feel like, oh, my gosh, they are clearly one of the four best that I have seen through this entire show. Mm-hmm. Um, I, they're fine. And they're kids. And you hate to be mean. And good on you. Uh, but I just, I was so disappointed for Jacob Chow. I thought they were so good. Oxygen is a completely different thing, but if you compare two barefoot contemporary acts, Jake and Chow is the one I would have put through. So I don't know. How did you feel about it? Were you happy with the way things worked out? Fortunately, there was, there was no, uh, there, I think there was a adult crying. Some yes. of the you peeps guys were tearing up. Yes. But there were no children crying. Keegan Caps kept it together. I think that, when she got her score of 90.7, I think she knew she wasn't going forward. Right. And, uh, you know, I she had sort of a like, this is not my first dance competition rodeo right. look on her face. <laughs> and I can take so it. <laughs> she had one of those, you know, gracious smiles with the eyes that were ticked. Mm-hmm. And, you know, off she went. So good for her. I- I'm very happy when the kids don't fall apart. Right. Uh, but... I don't know. I just was not happy. I was glad. I thought Oxygen's number was fantastic, and I was glad they went forward. They've had a really rough time of it. I'm always happy to see them do well. So, I don't know. Did you have any other thoughts on the semifinals? Do you want to grouse and pick nets? <laughs> well, I agree with you that um, I I really enjoyed Jake and Chow. I thought they did a beautiful job. Um, and, you know, especially for it being like – 
fairly traditional contemporary, Mm -hmm. you know, that sometimes we are like, "Uh, I don't know. Yes. Um, Right. So I, I really liked them. Um, and I really liked Jefferson and Adrianita too, the, the salsa Mm -hmm. couple, although I kind of agreed with the judges that like, they didn't really need that platform thing. It just, yeah. it did add. We're moving into the finals now. Right. I mean, it added an element of like risk and danger. No, it was a mistake. And I felt the finals, everything about the finals felt wrong. And a part of it was that they didn't have the audience and that things were changed somewhat due to the, all, the, the, the encroaching pandemic. So that took a lot of wind out of the sails of the finals, but also. I feel like pretty much everybody peaked in the semifinals Mm -hmm. and that these numbers were just not that good. And not only that, they made this thing of showing them mentoring the people and then they didn't do, in most cases, what they were mentored to do. They told Oxygen, you have to make the end of your number more exciting. It was not more exciting. And it also had a lot of prop clutter, which I think it they don't need. Right. So I don't know if this was a mandate that they had from the production. We need to make this more exciting. Mm-hmm. Use props. So they when they ended that, and I went, they totally didn't make it more exciting. They're not going to win. They're going to get judged down for that. And then Jefferson and Adrianita, their whole thing is fast and energy. And when they had their mentoring, they said, you have to make sure every second is super exciting. And then they're running up and down stairs. What the heck are you doing? There is no way that's going to be exciting. And did they not know when they were doing the mentoring that they were going to use this prop? Because that's what you want to say to them. Running up and down the stairs is going to take all the power out of your performance. Don't do it or find a way to do it that's fun. Don't try to hoist her up on that thing. It's going to look bad. This is what they needed to be mentored right. through. Why did they need to use that? I almost feel like at some point somebody said, there's not enough excitement in these performances. There's not going to be an audience. Use this big prop. And at the last minute, they had to figure out what to do. That's what it looked like to mm-hmm. me. And I just felt as soon as I saw that, I thought, they're not going to win. Right. This is going to be awful. And they got called out for exactly that. The geometry variable. Guys, that routine they did was not exciting. It really wasn't. It was, It really was like something they might have done at their first edition. It just lacked the the semifinals. At least they had the umbrella. They did their thing. This looked like they had to change it at the last minute or something. I guess they sped up like they were told in mentoring, but they, um, it was just, there was nothing special about it at all. And then MDC3, I mean, I don't mean to be hard on the kids. They were great. They came out. They did exactly what they always do. And they did it fine. So out of those four acts, yeah, I would pick them. But did I think they were the best of all the dancing I saw in this world of dance season? No, mm-hmm. they were fine. They were always fine. They were fine this time. Yeah. I. It was It was like, I felt like the other acts lost more than, than that they won. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, to, your point bring of, it. to your point about peaking during the semifinals, for sure. Yeah. 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 Oh, my Everybody goodness. Did. Mm-hmm. It was just, it was so disappointing because you want this to be the most exciting night. And it was totally not. All three, three out of the four acts had a significantly off performance mm-hmm. because of the choreography, the props, whatever. I don't know how it happened, but just the air was sucked out of that room. Yeah. Um. I, it was just so, such a, such a disappointing end, Mm -hmm. I thought. Though, I mean, yay for MDC3. How exciting for them to get a million bucks and all this accolades. But okay. You know? Yeah. Out of the whole season, us being like, oh, don't make kids cry. (laughs) Yeah. Actually, I didn't want to see them crying. The winner from the junior group. (laughs) Yeah. But it's, I mean, I think Jake and Chow were more exciting than them. I think that one couple that didn't even make it to the semifinals. I can't remember what their name is now. Uh, Styles and Emma. Yes, Styles and Emma. Yes. Much more exciting. Um, the fact that there are three of them is makes it a little different, I guess. And they were fine. There's nothing wrong with their dancing. They were beautiful to watch. But I felt like I watched them do basically the same thing four times. Right. And also, and you want to talk about junior division. Those three had to be pushing 18 all of them yes yes 
So they didn't feel as junior as, you know, Keegan or Savannah. Right. Um, Bailey and Keita also could easily have been adult competitors. They're, they're not junior division. No. Any, you know, even if they age wise are, they're pros. So, um, yeah. So it was just a weird ending mm-hmm. and I was, Kind of disappointed, but you could, I, you know, you could see exactly as it went along, they're not going to win. Right. They're not going to win. <laughs> so I thought that. Géométrie variable. I'm going to pull it out at the end because that's what they've done every time. Mm-hmm. And then they gave that performance and it was like, welp, <laughs> congratulations, kiddos. <laughs> you were the least disappointing tonight. Right. <laughs> Enjoy your million bucks. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Weird. Well, I would watch World of Dance again, but now I know where to set my expectations. Yes. So right. that's good. Right. And I'm going to make a spreadsheet. So I keep trying to get ready because <laughs> I swear there's people we saw that we, that never it, early on who should have been there later and weren't. Mm-hmm. I wonder if some people had to go like international acts had to go home because of the, I don't know. at what point in this did like travel restrictions right. begin? I don't know. Sure. Mm, probably not. I'm probably creating conspiracy theories out of nothing, <laughs> but congratulations, kids. Yay. Yay, you. Whatever. <laughs> so moving on to things that were kind of disappointing in WTF, <laughs> we watched the Veronica Mars season two episode, My Mother the Fiend. And my subtitle for this would be Much Ado About Not Much. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> With a twist ending. Mm-hmm. One of those. Mm-hmm. Don't turn off your TV five minutes before the show ends. Right. Because that's a thing that people do. Uh, but even that was completely out of nowhere and ridiculous. So, Veronica, hmm, she's, she's off her game this season, I think. Mm-hmm. I feel like she's doing things that I would like Veronica not to do. <laughs> <laughs> and so is Keith, like, stealing evidence from the yes, bus crash. what the heck, Keith? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Don't do that, Keith. What? <sighs> I am, uh, yeah, so it's like this season, I think they had a really sharp first season. There was, you know, highs and lows, but I really enjoyed the continuing storyline, and I enjoyed the character Veronica. And she's, maybe she needs Wallace to bounce off mm-hmm. of. Mm-hmm. To avoid making bad decisions. Because, I, I mean, I, I enjoy the revelation at the end that perhaps she was set up by the vice principal to find this stuff and make this trouble. I like that. I like that for him. I think that is cool. And I don't so much mind Veronica being tricked into doing this. That's fine. But what if she, she just makes these decisions that this is what happens and she starts talking about it? Right. <laughs> Like, it's a real thing that she has determined to be objectively true, that it was Celeste's baby. And she's talking about it in front of Celeste right. and in front of Duncan. You don't know this for sure, girl. What the heck? Right. What is the matter with you? Stop it. This is not who you are. So that whole thing just blew up in awkward ways. Mm-hmm. Um And it was another, like, the one with Jackie a couple episodes ago, where, like, if this was... The prince, vice principal's goal, like, yeah, what a long and winding road yes. to yes. get to the end. Yes, that is exactly right. It's like we have to make a TV show out of this. Let's let's have this convoluted thing that people in real life would. There's so much easier ways. I mean, if he if he it. had that information all along, yes, he surely could have found some other way to use it. Yes. Um, long before Veronica came on the scene. I mean, I guess it allows him to have fun at Veronica's expense as well. But, and you know, who wouldn't want that if you were in his position? But uh, that whole that whole plot just was not right from beginning to end and made Veronica into sort of a mean girl, even if she was being mean to former teenagers. Still, it just... You're the one spreading gossip. You, yeah. you went to, really, they put this thing in the tabloids that she had. Uh, right, that Trina needed bone marrow. <sighs> was an entertaining use of Trina. I did very much enjoy Trina, although the thing I enjoyed about her the most was her little thing with Kendall. <laughs> that was that was a fun little cat fight. And I guess they were, 
Chris McCarpenter was in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, right? I don't know. I didn't watch that. I think that might have been a little side reunion of people from that. But anyway, that was very fun yeah. with Logan sort of in the middle being bemused. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it last week on this podcast that I said, remember when Weevil and Logan were in detention yes. together and they were kind of friends? I wish they would work together on this because they both need to find out. And now yep. here it is. So what can I think of this week that I want them to do? I want them to never make Veronica be that person again. Yes. Wouldn't that be nice if they never did that again? <laughs> But uh, I would like Detective Logan and Detective Weevil sol solving the Felix case. And clearly, dude who's standing outside of the bathroom saying, he just beat him up, I would kill him, is the bad guy. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> look no further, lads. Yes. There he is. There he is. But so much beating up. Logan's scrappy, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> well, as you know. He unfortunately has experience. Yes. As they mentioned on the Veronica Mars Investigations podcast, and I had never quite thought about, he, he has experience in, you know, trying to evade <laughs> getting hit. Getting hit by his father. So. Yeah. Yeah. Man, has that kid had a tough life. I just, there was so much snark around him that it's, you forget to feel sorry for him. But holy cow, yeah. he's like the most put upon and victimized dude on this show and there's a long list to be on the top mm -hmm. of yes mm -hmm. but uh well i hope to see further logan weevil camaraderie in our future we shall see that was a weird episode <laughs> and just so much not to like about it yes and and not a lot of overall story, you know, uh, long-term yeah. story, except for the very end. I guess we have to talk about the ending, which, oh, man, really? <laughs> really? Really? Speaking of teen going pregnancies, show? it's Meg. Yeah, so Veronica, after picking up Abel Kuntz's belongings, because I guess there's nobody else to give them to, and are we supposed to expect that there will be something of interest in that box, or are we never going to see that box again? Was it just a ruse to get Veronica in the hospital at the one moment when Meg is unguarded by her horrible, horrible parents? Yes, that's my feeling. <sighs> and she creeps into her room and notices, I guess, I did not notice, but they mentioned on Veronica Mars Investigations that she notices that there are two heart monitors, hmm, and then she pushes aside a curtain, and there is Meg's, well, there is a big pregnant belly, which clearly is not the actress who's playing Meg's, clearly is just a photo inserted in of a big pregnant belly, right. but we are to believe that... How long has it been since the bus crash? Right? Because <laughs> she's huge. And, I mean, it has to be a noticeable enough belly for us all to go, <gasps> Right. But has it been, she's been there in a coma gestating that thing for several months. Quite some time, I guess, because I don't think she was showing when she was on the bus. No, she definitely wasn't. <clears throat> so. I mean, did they even know at that time when they were writing yeah. that episode that that's what no, was going to happen? No, I would guess not. And then there was an episode after that where Duncan was completely unaffected by the fact that Meg was on the bus. Mm -hmm. Which, if he had known, it didn't seem like a, Shh, thank God I ducked that kind of unconcerned. It seemed like, a, yeah, we dated for a while, but now I'm with you and I don't care. And then since then, he's been all shamefacedly sitting waiting at the hospital so and having bad dreams and having bad dreams so i don't know what we're supposed to make of this what i would like to make of this is can we start the next episode with veronica waking up and it was all a bad dream <laughs> can we please please can please? We please dallas this thing <laughs> oh my goodness what a terrible idea and that that we're just fine i mean it really well i've never been pregnant how long would it take to go from not showing and possibly not knowing to the size of that belly. Well, it how many months are we talking it, about? I mean, it's so different from person to person, but you know, that looked like a, an about to give birth belly, didn't it? Yeah, um, it was not. I mean, you could you could not be showing for the first like probably four months, especially if you're if it's your first. Um, mm -hmm. So then that would mean like a five month span from the bus crash okay. to now. Mm -hmm. Um, which I don't know because you'd have to have gone through 
Christmas, and they usually do Christmas yeah. on this show. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. Well, clearly it's an alien baby. <laughs> That's what's happening here. She's just dating an alien baby. And we're just going to veer off into a whole nother kind of Veronica Mars. <laughs> and we don't know if she knew, like... Yeah, that's, I mean, the timing on this seems questionable. And I think it's just because they had to make it a big enough belly to be noticed and unquestion, noticeable and unquestionable right. as to what was going on there. But it seems like she probably knew concerns. because that's why she was behaving the way she was toward. I guess. Yeah. And then do we think that Duncan knew? Yeah, that's a good question. In which case he's, yeah, I mean. Or maybe yeah, that's just, what he found out in that letter that he read. Oh, yeah, that might be. But what the letter was all very kind of quaintly and cutely handwritten. So it's not like it's her results from the obstetrician. No, no, it would have had to be something (laughs) totally different. Yeah. The the receptionist at the uh, OBGYN's office just writes handwritten notes. Congratulations. Congratulations. On your pregnancy. Please call our office for your next appointment. (laughs) That's right. A little bit of sealing wax on the back. It's all very nice. <laughs> this is the high end. This is probably like like Nicole's Beverly Hills kind of right, like her stuff. mammograms that she gets. <laughs> oh man! Well, I just this is the kind of thing that would make me think. You know what? I'm going to skip the rest of this season. Mm. If I were watching, it was something I was watching with my husband. I, sometimes on the shows we watch, I just get to a point where I go, you know what? I can't see this going anywhere that I'm going to want to watch. So. Let me know when the next season, when this storyline is over and we can resume. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was thinking maybe they were just keeping her alive to keep the baby alive. Uh, But then she opens her eyes. So that's the other (gasps) moment. Yes. So do we think she knew Veronica was there and then opened her eyes after? Or is this just her opening her eyes from the coma for the first time? Right. And also, it seems like somebody who's been in a long-term coma would have a lot more bells and Alarms and tubes and you would think. stuff happening, but okay. and also probably would not look that pretty. Mm-hmm. She's she's in a she's in a movie coma. Yes, she is TV coma, where you know, yeah, for sure. Somebody is brushing and washing her hair every day, mm-hmm. making sure that she has good skincare. Mm-hmm. Oh, so she's got that healthy glow, even though she's been unconscious for long enough to grow that thing. Right. Well, she's she's got the pregnancy glow going. <laughs> Apparently so. Oh, my goodness. And then in a very small subplot, apparently not only does Mac have terrible taste in radio shows, she's crushing on she's Cassidy. She's flirting with why? Cassidy. Oh, what why? the heck? Oh, why? Honey. Yeah. Honey. Come on. Really? No. Really? That dude? Yeah. No, thanks. Kids today. <laughs> I don't know. We could tell you, honey, this is not going to end well. Nope. Surely, surely there are other guys at this high school than the ones we see. <laughs> also, it had it made me laugh, like C- Cassidy going to Kendall and like, I need you to like sign things for me and stuff because I'm 16. Like, isn't this exactly what she was doing for Dick Sr.? Yes. And, right. and how come she didn't get in trouble for that? Yeah, that's right. I, I don't understand why she is not in jail because she was like the agent of – he she skipped town was and she helping. would take the fall for it. Yeah. That's the way it should happen. So, yes, that I had not thought of that and that is a very good question. My husband's theory is that Cassidy is setting her up, that he's going to set up this company and then it's going to – fail spectacularly and her name is all over it. Yeah. Which I would like if to think. If he's so. smart enough for that. Yeah. I don't know that we've seen evidence that he is. Yeah. But we've also seen evidence that he hates her and would very rightly blame. I mean, the fact that she was having an affair with Logan and that he investigated it is what caused everything to fall apart. So I think he could have more than the usual amount of resentment towards her. And I really hope that that's what he's doing. And not actually thinking he's going to run a business at age 16 that's going to be successful and that, that she will then screw up in some way. Right. I love his, I've rented office space. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And anyway. as they pointed out on the podcast, like, don't they still live in the same house? Why are they meeting right. at the coffee shop? <laughs> right. Good point. Oh, anyway. I do not have confidence in that kid's business uh, no. acumen. Well, next week... Because we love this episode so much. 
We can't wait to watch more. We're going to watch two episodes of Veronica Mars. Uh, we're going to watch the episode One Angry Veronica, which does not sound promising, and Donut Run. Well, I like donuts. Mm-hmm. And uh, from there, we will be thinking this week about what we want to do, since obviously World of Dance has pirouetted off our stage. Uh, we have to think of something else to watch. So we're trying to think if we want to take on another series or we're going to go back to our challenge round of doing one-off movies and uh, books and stuff or something else. So listeners, if you have an idea of something you would like us to watch and talk about, hit us up on Twitter at Roundabout Chat uh, or on our uh, website at ParentingRoundabout.com. Give us some ideas. And that is going to be it for today's round two. Please subscribe to our Parenting Roundabout podcast so you won't miss any of our episodes. We have something new for you every weekday. As always, you can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. Goodbye, Catherine. Bye, Terry. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.